And let's charge in to see what God has in store for us today, okay? So come Holy Spirit, release the power of the kingdom right now. Open our hearts, open our minds to all that you have for us. We give you thanks and praise for this day. Come, Lord, lead us into new things that you have in store for us. Cause everything that would be of concern just to fall off to the side so we can worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This morning I want to speak with you for a moment about blood and sweat and tears. Some of you are getting really excited. You're saying, hey, I think I'll go home. I think I have a t-shirt that says that from a concert maybe you went to. You remember that group, Blood, Sweat, and Tears? Where I was playing a little bit of them last night. Arnie goes, hey, that's pretty good. Where did you get that? Blood, sweat, and tears on Memorial Day. Listen, Memorial Day has everything to do with blood, sweat, and tears. In 1940, Winston Churchill addressed Parliament with these words, I would say to the House, as I said to those who have joined this government, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. We have before us an ordeal of the most grievous kind. We have before us many, many long months of struggle and of suffering. In this room are two kinds of people. Those who realize that very concept of blood, sweat, and tears. They understand that anything of value requires blood, sweat, and tears. They understand that there is something that is required and that item is sacrifice. And I think it's so appropriate, especially on Memorial Day weekend. I know we want to get going and we're excited about, uh, you know, that it's the unofficial kickoff to summer, right? And we want it to be a joyful uh, kind of event, but it's also important for us to understand that without the sacrifices of men and women laying down their life for the sake of this country, that we wouldn't enjoy, we wouldn't have the freedoms that we have. The second group of people in this room are those who want, may honestly believe that they are entitled to anything that they want, and they want it right now, with little or no effort whatsoever. Thanks be to God that our God knows quite a bit about blood, sweat, and tears. I want to share with you a couple of clips because I think they're very important because those who wear the uniform of our nation, who serve, know that they put themselves at risk, sacrificing of their very lives for our freedom. Their spouses and children of those who serve for on behalf of our country know that when they say goodbye to their loved one before they ship out or as they set, are sent out, that they may never see their husbands or wives, their moms and dads. And that, my friends, is the risk of sacrifice. No, Go ahead. Oh, my God. 
as well as their families who continue to leave, live with the sacrifice of their loss. loss. No words, Lord, can ever express the depth of sorrow or gratitude that we express to you and to those who have laid down their lives for our very freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> this morning, in Jason's memory, I have put a little gift in his memory, and you can see it says Lance Corporal Jason Fry, United States Marine Corps. And I have designated that the first gift toward the upgrades of this congregation our lighting, our sound, our children's area, and everything are done in his memory. If you have someone that you would like to honor for their sacrifice, I would invite you as well. This is in addition to our regular giving. But I want this first gift to be laid out there not just for the sake of upgrades and, and everything for a church, but every time we have a chance to proclaim the gospel, the freedom that comes from Jesus Christ and Him alone, mm. we have a chance to take back what was taken from us. And we can plant a seed, great seed, in our loved one's memory. Will you join with me? In that. How many of you know someone or have been touched by someone whose life was taken way too short because of in service? Praise God. For those of you who have served and for your families, the sacrifices that they have made along the way, knowing that when they send you off, that they may never ever see you again. I want you to know that this house respects your sacrifices and all that you have done. And I want to say publicly thank you to the men and women who wear the uniform of the United States of America. understand what sacrifice means. Any great accomplishment requires sacrifice. It will cost you your blood, your sweat, and even tears. Some kind of effort on your part. And we know this from life in general. We're so excited this weekend. We've had so many different, so many folks who have graduated. James is with us. He graduated. And uh, Luke and Morgan, the class of 2018, where are you? Those who are celebrating, even graduating from college, other colleges and, and what have you. We're so thankful and we're excited for you. And we celebrate that as well. It has not come cheap. You realize that to graduate college or grad school or high school, there's many sacrifices to be made. Those of you who own businesses know that it requires your blood, your sweat, and tears to make rank 
or be a member of the elite. It will take everything and more. Everyone knows that you don't just get a trophy for showing up. Amen? <laughs> to have a great relationship with your spouse or with your kids, it requires sacrifice, blood, sweat, tears. How much are you putting into your relationship with your loved ones? Are they worth every so often setting down your favorite pacifier? You know the one I got it in my hip pocket. <clears throat> you know, it's amazing how folks have forgotten how to communicate with each other. We can just knock out a text or, or an Instagram or whatever, and we just shoot it off. I mean, nothing. It doesn't even have to process the mind or the heart that Jesus gave us. Amen. Be careful of the stuff that comes out of you just like that. And it's so easy for us to lose track of what it is to deeply communicate in a caring way and to communicate with others that we enjoy their company and their presence. To have a great relationship requires sacrifice. In Luke chapter 22, verses 39 to 46, Jesus Christ himself modeled what sacrifice was when he was there and he was getting ready to go to the cross. He said, not nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. As he surrendered himself to his father and to the cross. And the word tells us that when he got down to pray, that his blood, that his, his sweat literally became blood. Why did he do it? He did it for you and for me, didn't he? Blood. Why blood? Because life is in the blood. Leviticus tells us that there is life in the blood. We've gotten away from singing so many songs about the blood of Jesus. Do you remember when we'd sing, there's power in the blood? How many of you were raised in a church where you sang, there's power in the blood? When was the last time we sang about those things? There's power, wonder-working power in the blood. And the blood will never lose its power. Oh, wow. There's another wonderful <coughs> song. There's life in the blood. And what the scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Why? Because you believe for what you believe in. And I have to tell you, when Jesus began to pray, and he began, his sweat turned into tears, it turned into blood. He didn't bleed for the environment. He didn't bleed for the trees. He bled for you. He bled for me. He bled for those he believed in. Friends, he believes in you. Do you realize that the very life blood of royalty flows in your very veins? We have this funny habit, wherever we go, we bring our blood with us. Have you noticed that? <laughs> and what we put ourselves into, our blood goes along with us. Yesterday, I don't know how this happened. Well, I know how it's happened. I was walking in to the movie theater. I was going to see, uh, what was it, Han Solo. Okay. <clears throat> There's a shameless plug. I don't know. <laughs> I go in, I'm talking with Lori and Brian. Wham! It's like, what the heck? I just wiped myself out in a movie theater. 
I banged my arm up here and suddenly I got blood coming out and dripping down and everything else. <laughs> Only I could wipe myself out at a movie theater with lazy boy chairs <laughs> and feet that go up and they bring you food and everything else. So who's going to wipe himself out? I wipe myself out at a movie theater. People like when you keep your blood to yourself. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Uh, that all of a sudden used to be, you know, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, you're bleeding. Here, let me get something on that so you can stop that bleeding. Now they're like, Ew, keep that away from me. Go get me a blood spell kit, you know? I'll tell you what, we know that there is, there is something very special about blood. When you bring your blood to work, you are pouring out your energy. Your blood circulates all the time without you thinking about it. And that's one of the most powerful things is blood represents circulation. Do you realize, did you know that in the Hebrew scripture, in the Hebrew word for blood, it also is a word for money. What do those two have in common? They both are in circulation. Amen? And that's one of the reasons why giving in this congregation, not just in your volunteer hours, but in your finances as well, what you put yourself into, what you sacrifice for. So you take your life blood to work. And then in that process, you pour out your life blood and then it circulates into the giving of our congregation so that we can share the gospel. We can be an agent of change and transformation here. Let, you want to know what this church means to some people? Don't ask, just ask the, the person who will tell you that their life was changed. Imagine all the lives of other people that are changed because you have encountered the life force of the gospel, the lives that you've touched. Your sweat. Work is difficult. It's challenging. I had a chance this just this past week. I had somebody who was going, oh, it's work. It's oh my gosh, I just gotta go to work. I gotta get up in the morning. I gotta go blah 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 blah. I said, listen, there's a reason why they call it work. There's a reason. It's because that's what it is. It's work. And it, out of work will come sweat. And what you sweat for gives you meaning and purpose and great joy. Give God thanks and praise for AC. Amen. Huh? Amen. <laughs> But you know what? There's a real problem when we've got a no sweat kind of kind of idea that it's all going to just show up at our front door. I'm a child of God. But I also know that every day God has a purpose for me and he's got a purpose for you. God provides for birds. He gives them worms. But they got to get up and they got to go get them. Amen? So it goes. Sweat is there. It's challenging. There are going to be tears in the process that you're going to shed. One of the greatest things that I, I love in the scripture is it the, you know the shortest verse of scripture. What is it? Jesus wept. Jesus wept. In that scripture, we understand that we have a Savior who knows the difficulties and the challenges. He also knows the griefs and the sorrows that we experience. He knows those tears of sadness. The tears may come for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. He also knows what is on your heart. And he knows. The scripture says he's gathered up your tears. Revelation says not a single one of the tears that you shed. Does he ever. Does ever goes by that he is not there to catch him. And doesn't know. He knows your broken heartedness. He knows the hurts that have come to your life. And he also knows the hurts that you've passed on to others. Amen. 
And he is the God of all and the forgiver of all and the healer of all. Amen, church? Thank God. But he is also tears of joy. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. And he knows those tears of joy, even as the tears of, you, of being reunited with their loved ones that we had a chance to see this morning. Didn't that bring your heart to such warmth and joy? He sees and he knows those tears of joy that you shed as well. And he celebrates with you. John 15, 13 brings us back to the God of all sacrifice. Because not only does, do, do we hear that word in John 3, 16, that God so loved that he gave. He sacrificed. Why would he do that? He wanted a family. And all he had was a son. So he gave his son so he could gain a what? A family. Come on, church. He gave his son so he could gain a what? Family. That's right. Oh, that's my church. You're ferocious. <laughs> I love that. Jesus Christ in John chapter 15, verse 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friend. We have gold star husbands and wives, gold star children. Do you realize that our Father in heaven is a gold star Father? Because he gave his very own son on behalf of us. So he could purchase our freedom and our liberty. Where we ever got the idea that this democracy, that this, this liberty was just some great idea that rolled out of the 16 and 17 hundreds. No, 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 my friends. It goes much farther back than that. It goes way back to way even before the Garden of Eden. God had planned a plan for our liberation to bring us back into full fellowship with him. I'll tell you what I just preached on. Huh? Lord, thank you so much. Who are we, Lord? Every time we try and hold some kind of bitterness or unforgiveness in the face of your forgiveness, in the face of your mercy, who are we to hold on to grudges? And yet we do it all the time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for those who have given their lives and for their families, we give you thanks, but you are the ultimate veteran who has laid down his life so that he could take it up again. To you be all honor and praise. Amen. Amen.